We've done analyses of the economic effects of tariffs in previous videos, but I want to focus now on how these tariffs are sometimes imposed in practice under current uh, trade policy. So I've got a, and these are uh, broadly speaking those that are WTO consistent. So I'm not looking at instances where a country is flouting their uh, international uh, trade agreement obligations. So here are five of the uh, typical ways in which countries can sometimes raise their tariffs uh, in, a, in, the, in the modern economies. So we have the, the different um, provisions. I'm going to talk about the criteria that where the WTO allows these to be imposed, and also whether or not the tariffs have to be imposed on an MFN basis, that is to say, a, a tariffs that have to inc be increased on all sources of the imported products, or whether it can be targeted to particular uh, particular countries. So the first one that, that I've got listed here is so-called safeguard. A safeguard is when there have been import surges that are unexpected or as a consequence of unforeseen developments by the uh, um, in, in the international economy. So in this instance, the, the WTO and GATT before it allowed countries to put a temporary increase in tariffs, to, basically to give the domestic industry some breathing room uh, to, to deal with these unforeseen uh, circumstances. And the criteria is such that the domestic government must show that there has been serious injury to the domestic industry competing with the foreign like product. And if the government can demonstrate that the, the serious injury has indeed occurred from sources of imports of all types, they can put temporary MFN basis tariffs on the products. Now, we'll talk about safeguards in, the detailed safeguards in a, in a different video, but it's important to note that A, that they're temporary, up to eight years, and B, they're on an MFN basis. So the idea is that you impose the safeguard tariffs on everybody, on all sources of the, of the imports. You're not selecting one country versus, uh, versus the other. So this is, in a lot of ways, what the what standard tariff analysis in a, in a trade class would, uh, would, would be uh, looking at. You're imposing the tariff on everybody. Anti-dumping duties is when foreign firms dump into the domestic economy. Now I'll talk about the details of, of uh, dumping in, in, a, in, in a separate video. But if the dumped imports, essentially selling below production cost or below the uh, foreign country's own home market uh, price, if the foreign firms dump and these dumped imports cause material injury, then a, a domestic government can raise the tariffs on those foreign firms alone and leave everybody else untouched. So it's essentially trying to raise tariffs to level the playing field, if you will. Foreign firms have uh, have dumped the products, sold below production costs, and so the tariff is imposed on them and them alone. So MFN basis, typically not. But you are raising the uh, duties on particular sources of the product. So. In a different video, we talked about differential tariffs on different um, uh, different countries, and so that would be the economic analysis that one might do to analyze anti-dumping duties. With countervailing duties, it this is can be done in the instance of foreign government subsidies. 
on exported goods. So if foreigners have, foreign government has subsidized uh, firms that then sell in the, in the international market and cause material injury to a domestic industry, then the WTO rules allow there to be tariffs imposed on that country's goods and that country's goods alone. So this is also not on an MFN basis. In both of these instances, there's uh, so-called unfair trade practices, which will, and the WTO allows a domestic government to impose duties on them and them alone. So this, this potentially, both of anti-dumping and countervailing duties may not affect other countries at all, other than to potentially price these guys out of the market and let other countries um, replace them. But again, that's in the differential tariff uh, video. There are also various general exceptions, and this is also is uh, uh, will be part of a separate video. But if there are health issues, say some foreign product has um, salmonella, so chicken products have salmonella, or there's some uh, some problem that is uh, causes potential damage to uh, domestic uh, agricultural products. Uh, Mediterranean fruit fly was an example uh, in the United States some years back where uh, foreign, uh, especially European um, uh, citrus fruit was not allowed into the United States because there was a pest inside it. So if there are the instances of, of health issues, for example, then a country can impose duties on those particular sources of the, of the, um, of the health problems. So it could be on an MFN basis. It could be that it's only imports, say, from Canada because there's a a swine flu outbreak in there, and their um, uh, and that's contaminating some meat, and so Canada alone is uh, is targeted. Or it could be a general ban if there are uh, international uh, some sort of international crisis. But in, importantly, this must be done on the basis of a scientific of scientific evidence. There has you can't just say. Well, you know, these, uh, these American products, uh, oh, they're all dangerous. We're just going to uh, ban the imports of, uh, of American beef. You know, there, are, there needs to be a, 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 some sort of health basis uh, for that, or scientific uh, basis for that, uh, for that imposition. The other, and this is uh, particularly uh, relevant in, in developing countries, that can sometimes have their applied tariff, the tariff that they have in place, below that rate which has been negotiated in multilateral uh, trade agreements. So let's say that uh, Argentina has an, a, a bound rate for automobiles of, say, 30%. So that's what they've negotiated at the, at the, at the WTO. And, but they have decided on their own to unilaterally lower their tariffs to, say, 15%. They are under, Argentina is under no obligation to keep the, this tariff at, uh, at 15%. They're only obligated to keep it below their bound rate. So a country that has what's called a tariff overhang, that is to say when the applied tariff rate is below the bound rate, where, where the, the tariff in practice is below the international commitments, there are no restrictions on a country's ability to raise the, the tariffs up to that level. Now, I said that this was uh, more relevant for, uh, for developing countries. It's because, in, for example, in the, United, in the United States, almost all of our applied tariff rates are essentially our bound tariff rates. So there's really very little overhang. 
So we don't really have much wiggle room. Whereas uh, many developing countries have been very reticent to lower their bound rates so that they can have this ability to raise uh, tariffs uh, if, you know, some, if for some reason they feel like they need to do so. However, there are still are obligations under the WTO system. Those applied rates can be increased to the bound rates, but they do have to be done on an MFN basis. You can't raise tariffs only on some and not on others. Now, one other instance that I don't have analyzed here is in the instance of uh, a WTO dispute settlement process. If you recall from that, that video, if a country loses a WTO dispute, it's expected to change its policy. If it doesn't change that policy, then the WTO can say to a, uh, the petitioning government, who's won the case, since the losing government has not changed its policy, you are allowed to impose duties on that country and that country alone. So that would be a case of a non-MFN basis done because of the, um, uh, the policies of the government that has lost the case. But again, that would not be done on an MFN basis, but instead very much uh, applied to one country and one country alone.